And here we go. We have Coach Kenny Guyton, wide receivers coach. We're excited to get to know a little bit more about you and how you ended up coming here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and yep. how we ended up in this spot. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Kenny Guyton. Uh, my wife, I got a wife, Rachelle Guyton, and uh, I have three boys. I got a Jordan Guyton, who's 11. We kind of roll with the J's. So I got Jordan, I got Jackson, who's four, and then I got Josiah, who's one. And so uh, it's a fun household right now. Um, I was at Arkansas last the last three years, and this past, and now I'm, I'm here at Wisconsin. I'm excited. I can't wait to go. And how this kind of all went down, man, just the past relationship with Coach Fickle. Yep. You know, um, I actually played in the Big Ten, a past place that Coach Fickle was at, and uh, he was my D coordinator, and he was actually my interim head coach. And so um, I think from those days, you know, being a leader, being a captain, being a guy that can lead men, um, kind of led to us getting back together, and I was excited to get back to this Big Ten and go to work. All right, Jays, is there a reason that you like, just like the letter, um, or is it? Honestly, there was no rhyme or reason whatsoever. The first one got a J name. So and once you went we one J, it was? It kept going. Okay. It kept going. <laughs> was there a battle with na the names, or is it, was it just simple? Did you pick that? Did no. your wife pick that? How did it go? Um, it was a collaboration, to okay. be honest with you. Uh, we, we came up with probably about four different names. And honestly, we probably took the first name from one of them and the middle name from the other, and then we rolled from there. So, okay. yeah. And then it, it happened to be great for us. Our first, uh, Jackson, my four-year-old, because now we got a little bank of names, right? Sure. And so once Josiah came, it was easy. We went to that bank and, like, got it done. Got his name. Just the way to get just hammering out, <laughs> getting stuff done. So when you were with Coach Fickle, what was it about that you knew at some point would be great to get back with him yes. as a coach? Yes, just the man he was. Period. Outside of football, outside of sports, outside the building, he's always been the coach Luke Fickle that you see today. A great man that's a tough guy that stands on, you know, great things and being a great person. You know, he wants great people around him, not good, great people around him, you know. And so I knew that that's something I wanted. I wanted someone that was going to push me to be great. And I think that's what he does every day. All day, that's who he is. And so when you were at Ohio State, I heard a little tidbit. You had six touchdowns in a half? Yes, sir. Who the yes, heck sir. were you playing? How did we get them on the schedule? <laughs> uh, we were playing Florida a and I actually got my first start the week before and uh, had a good game. And uh, so once I, I knew they were coming in, I would start again. And you know the preparation, man. It just You can kind of see it all happening, unfolding. And it's just one of those days that came together to be a great day for me. And the guys, just the, whole the normal team. deal. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> exactly. So, did you exactly. not play in the second half? Or I, um, funny story, I was out the second half. Um, I'm, I got like my. I wanted to get my, ten, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you know I did. Yeah. But I had like my rib cage and stuff unfolded. You know, I'm like I'm done for the day. The third quarterback, he goes in and slashes his hand. Okay. So I got to go back in the game. I'm like, okay, I'm back in now. I got to. <laughs> so that was a funny story, man. That I, I went back in and finished the game off. But no more touchdowns. No more touchdowns. Handed the ball man. off the rest of the game. Oh, okay. Handed well, the you ball off. To... Yep. I don't think I had one pass attempt. All right. <laughs> so one of the things I learned just doing a little research, your relationship with your dad. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about that because you mentioned it over and over about how influential he's mm -hmm. been and in kind of your journey. Just tell yep. us a little bit about he coached you growing yep. up and the whole deal. Yep. Well, I come from a family of coaches. You know, uh, my dad coached. He has a twin brother that coached. And he has other brothers that coached as well. So I knew I always wanted to be a coach. Um, he coached me in high school. So with that being said, I had that tough rod right on me, you know, 24 <laughs> seven. Was he one of yeah. those dads that was extra hard on his kid or as a coach? Or was he uh, because that's yeah. always an interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. dynamic I get what to you're watch. Saying. Um, honestly, I think he was tougher on me than other guys, but it wasn't no different from what, how it was in the household. You know what I mean? It was always, um, he's a guy that, I mean, my dad doesn't curse, he doesn't drink, you know, never smoked before, things of that nature. Did you follow, he's are a, you in that same yeah, path? Yeah, I'm in that same path, same Respect. path. Uh, okay. Yeah, don't, just don't show a Bud Light to me, all right? Don't. Yeah, I won't. But um, so we, uh, he was always the guy that just showed a great leadership by example. You know, he was always stand, a stand-up guy that just, I wanted to be like him and emulate him. I thought my entire life I would be a high school coach and do, you know, step mm -hmm. in the same footsteps as my father. And um, with, with having him around 24-7, I had a thousand brothers. I only have one sister. I have a sister that's older than me, 
and um, she's a great supporter and everything. And my dad, it was like I had a thousand brothers because of how he carried himself in the facility. Um, guys wanted to be around him. And so I knew Eisenhower football where I went to high school ever since I was mm -hmm. two, three years old, you know? So I had so many brothers because my dad took care of everyone. So how much stuff, I mean, so you just soaked everything in that your dad did? I did, I did. I want to soak everything in. He's got a twin, they hang out 24 seven. I want to soak everything that they did in and, and try my best to be better, <laughs> you know? So when did you know that you could be a division one player? When mm -hmm. did that, is that, was that, did it come up early? Was it late? What was that process That's for you? always a funny one, man. I love that question because it, it, it comes as a surprise. You know, you're just playing ball, something mm -hmm. you've done for your entire life, or you might have just started in high school, whatever, whatever your story is. But I played ball all the way as a little kid, and next thing you know, you get that first piece of mail that has a school logo on it. Do you remember who it was from? Yes, sir, it was Kansas, okay. University of Kansas. And so um, when I got that, I just, I opened it. I'll never forget I opening it and saying, that they just offer me to play football on a Division I stage? And I ran to my mom and dad room and just went crazy. And after that, it was like, I think I'm pretty good enough to go do this. So just started, you know, balling. So you just randomly got a letter like, come mm -hmm. play at Kansas. Oh, yeah. Got an offer letter. They offered me. Yep. And then it just more and more came in. So that gave yep. you, once you saw that, then it was yes, sir. the world's there. And then Damn. Ohio State was where you You're ended exactly up going. Right. You're exactly right. OK, so you get to Ohio State, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're not big fans of them here. I understand You're that. not anymore not now not either. Anymore. Uh, but your process was fascinating because you waited your time yep. and then you thought oh, it's gonna be my spot yep. and some hot shot comes in yep pretty good player yes sir and you had to kind of step back How, exactly right take us through that process because that is not easy as a competitor yes. and as somebody that wants to get out there and play how'd you handle that oh it's tough it's very very tough and, and like i said earlier in the, um while we've been talking is i honestly feel like it's the reason i'm in this seat today that situation you know um you have the the moments where you're calling back home to mom and crying and bawling your eyes i don't out, know if this is for you know? me and, yep. yep and it's like hey i see what's happening i love y'all i don't know if this is you know what it's yeah. gonna be you know i don't think this is what the lord has for me you know and my dad always told me hard work hard work pays off hard work don't worry about anything else work hard and be the leader that you've always been and when you get your shot, you got to excel. So all that leadership stuff, that's when it gets put to the test and you end up becoming a captain. Exactly right. And so how did the rest of your time go? When yep. Because that disappointment, yep. not, nowadays, not that there's anything wrong with it, but yep. nowadays it's like, wow, well, there's got to be something better over yeah, here. Exactly. And exactly. you just said that moment is what spurred you on. Yep. Maybe not as much football wise, just off the field and in your life. Yep. Exactly right. I mean, you just hit it on the head. I knew that a degree from that school, planning this conference was bigger than going to see if that grass is greener anywhere else. You know, I knew that I would get an opportunity, you know, and I knew that if I got that opportunity, I want to be set up in a position where I succeed. And I won't succeed if I'm not ready for it. And so every day I'm going to carry myself as if I'm the starter. And when that day does come, I'll be ready to roll. And you get a couple, you throw six, <laughs> six touchdowns in a half. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. you finish up and then did it, you always know? I mean, obviously your dad coached. Yep. You always knew this is what you wanted. I do. always knew I want the coach. I always knew I want the coach. I, honestly, like I said, I, I thought I would be a high school coach. Honestly, my, my main goal was I want to go back to my high school and hopefully be the head coach one day and run it for 30 years, you know, and have some good years. And it just so happened I had a few opportunities, you know, people saying graduate assistant. I'm like, hey, I got, I got to see what this is all about, you know, and so that was, that's a great story. You go down to say hello to all your former teammates. <laughs> yes, sir. And then that's true. Herman yep. sees you down that's there. Very true. And tells you, come down Wednesday. You yep. come full suit. Now, did you go tie? I did. did. You go, I went tie, and you, suit, everything. And they had you working right off the get-go. Right that day. That day. I, I walk in this facility. This was back at University of Houston. Coach Tom Herman uh, remembered that I was from Houston, you know, because he recruited me. And, uh, and he knew I wanted the coach. So um, I go to the national championship game and I'm at the hotel, scruffy, rough looking, everything, you know, just saying what's up to my guys, good luck. And he's like, hey, you still want to coach? Yes, sir. Meet me at the facility next week. I'll send you the address. <laughs> I go full suit, tie, everything. I walk into a staff meeting room. It's the entire staff, 
I'm introducing myself Nobody to people. Nobody else had a suit on, I'm guessing. Nobody else got a suit. Um, I'm introducing myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know a few familiar faces, honestly. He then brought some people with him. And it was like, all right, go wait in this office for me. I go wait. Next thing you know, I leave his office from talking to him about being a coach. You know, he, that the real conversation that you need to have, knowing that, hey, it's a bunch of hours, whatever it is, whatever it is, you know. And so I let him know I'm committed to it. I left that office and went and got a laptop and <laughs> started working. And so that's how it all started for me. Yeah, it is crazy when you think about the fact that you get in that adversity situation where you know you could have pouted you could have went somewhere mm -hmm. else you stick through it and all those coaches see that too yep. that's a great lesson to teach yes, sir. all of your players now that you're coaching you're exactly right you're exactly right and it's, it's a simple saying but it's hard to live hard work pays off it's simple everybody knows it everybody know what they supposed to do it's hard to live it and so i feel like that was something i tried my best to take advantage of i'm gonna live this i'll live it i'll show people it's not about the talk it's not about hey i'll go do this and i'll go do that no it don't matter I'll just show you. And once I showed him. Dang, it, it I want to get out and run a route, man. You got me all fired up. <laughs> yes, all sir. right, so the weather, mm -hmm. you know, you're a Houston yep. guy. Yep. And you spent some time in Ohio. This mm -hmm. isn't going to scare you, right? Not at all. It's not even that not cold. Like last week was a little cold, but yep. nah, you're fine. I'm that, fine. That's going to be no problem. My only thing is I got to teach the wife how to drive in this snow. Ooh. That's it. But that's let me tell you something. There's it. a lot of people that need to learn how to <laughs> exactly. drive in this snow. You're exactly right. So your wife and family coming up, you, <laughs> yes, you found a spot up here, and you're excited for them to kind of just take in the whole exactly. experience. Exactly right. I can't wait for it. I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm not myself until I get my family around, you know? So just a little saying. I, I'm, I'm myself. But um, I, can't, I cannot wait to get them here. The wife is excited. She's looking up you know, around the house, places and stuff where we can go eat and take the kids. So we're excited, we can't wait. Awesome. Well, <laughs> what are you most excited about with this group? Mm -hmm. You've obviously gotten, you got a long time, got some time yet, but yep. with this group and with what you've seen on film, how excited are you about this? Just getting your hands yep. and being able to start getting this thing going on offense. I'm excited about the versatility of this group. I think you got different styles of guys. You got some slot guys that are quick, fast, work the middle, get the ball in their hands, do things and things and, and make guys miss. Um, I think you got bigger guys that can be physically overwhelming. You got some all around guys, you know, whatever it is. But I think the versatility of this room is awesome right now. And I can't wait to hone in on the details. Mm. You know, there's some detailed stuff that I feel like if we can get down, we can be one of those groups that people are talking about around the nation. So who is your ideal mm -hmm. uh, all the time? You're, I don't know, how, what are you, how old are you right now? <laughs> 32. 32. In your yes, 32 sir. years, if you could say, God, that's the receiver I want. Yeah. Who is the guy Ooh, that you're looking Oh, that's at? a great question, man. So I can go NFL, uh, college, yeah, no, it No, is it Randy Moss? Is it? Yeah. Like, what is the, Ooh. what are those traits that you're like, man, if I could just get my hand, who is that player for you? Could I say a mix? Yes. Of two guys? Yeah, give me the whole thing if okay. you want. And this guy with his route running. Because, yeah. I mean, Devontae Adams to me, best route oh, runner. Oh, yeah, I agree with He's that. He's crossing people I agree up. With that. And I agree with that. If I could get a mix of Devontae Adams' feet work and route running. Okay. And Randy Moss' stretcher. Like, I mean, just, you know, you better be running backwards when I'm five yards off the ball. Like, you better start running. So now this guy's got all his speed run by you and run routes like Devontae Adams. He's That's different, you know, so might be known as the best ever. So, yeah. And then and the last part, I would say a guy that attacks the ball like a Dez Bryant. OK. You know, like, hey, if that ball's in the air. I don't care, QB. I got you. I'm going to get it. I don't care where it's at. Man, I'll tell you what, Badger fans, <laughs> we're going to be excited with Kenny Guyton as the wide yes. receivers coach. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm you excited bet. as well.